Now, LGBT movies have been on the rise, especially in 2017, but there's no other cinematic masterpiece that truly defines the genre like Pokemon the movie I Choose You. Now, when you've had a franchise for so long, Earth Day ends up becoming your favorite holiday because recycling movies is the favorite thing for some of these people. So leave it to Pokemon to take the best from their series and from their movies and pretty much just make a, a highlight video about everything they've done in the past? Let me explain. So what we have here is pretty much the greatest hits of Ash and his lover in this Earth 2 retelling. Now, if you've only watched Digimon growing up, Pokemon are pretty much these animal-like hybrids that evolve as their powers grow and they're very akin to mumble rappers who just repeat their names over and over again. And in the main storyline, we follow a kid named Ash who's been waiting for his 10th birthday so he can become a Pokemon trainer and also straight up leave his house before hitting puberty. Problem is, my dude was so excited to become a Pokemon trainer that he Kenny Rogered his alarm clock, so he ends up arriving late to collect his Pokemon and is stuck with the reject electrical rat named Pikachu. And shocker, they don't get along. They set off on their adventure when Ash chucks one of his balls at a wild Pokemon, which causes the movie to turn into Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, but then Pikachu goes full out Thor and saves the day. They end up finding the feather from the beginning of Forrest Gump, except it's rainbow, because like I said, this is an LGBT movie. Titles play and we get a little montage that honestly makes me wonder, what's the difference between being a Pokemon master and a slave master? Because I'm looking at Mr. Ash and his Pijango over here, rounding up other Pokemon just so they can Mandingo fight later on. I don't know. They arrive at this place so Ash can Skype his mom, and he learns about this super rare Aslan-looking Pokemon who's very, very hard to find. And he finds him in the next scene. He also runs into a guy and a girl who are going to be his travel buddies, but she ain't no Misty, and he's not high enough to be Brock, but they'll do for this movie. They find a rejected Charmander, as well as the dude who left him there, and this kid ends up becoming the villain. And this kid is so classless, to the point that they even named him Cross, which is already asking for trouble. Homie appears throughout the movie, creeping on other 10-year-olds, he pops up out of nowhere holding the Arthur Fist, but worst of all, leaving a Pokemon is like trying to return your adopted child when you've lost the receipt. Anyways, Ash takes Charmander, gives him that sana sana colita de rana, and he gets better and they continue their journey. They end up learning about a Pokemon named Ho-Oh who gives the feathers to whoever he believes is the chosen one, and he's supposed to be like the most legendary Pokemon of them all, and I guess Ash just so happens to be the chosen one because he got the feather. This sets them on the Skittles adventure to find the end of the rainbow so they can meet this legendary Pokemon. But Ash has to hit the gym first. He trains Pikachu, who continues to refuse to get into his Pokeball. Trains Caterpie, who goes from a bug to a green plank from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Trains Butterfree, who he has to set free because he finds a girl before Ash does. And as Charmander faces past owner, who freaking summons Satan himself to give him a whooping. At this point, Ash gets his first loss, but we also realize that there's this ghost Pokemon acting like the puberty monster who's been following him around and making him, like, lash out and say things that are just taking everyone else off. So, something has to happen where he knocks out, ends up in limbo, and then he's able to wake up like Leonardo DiCaprio and appreciate the people who are around him. They end up finding the rainbow, the mountain, and Robin Williams from Jumanji, only to cross cross again who comes to jack the feather which only makes things worse all the pokemon turn on ash and they blast him harder than luke skywalker leaving him crippled besides pikachu at this point ash has tried everything to get pikachu into his pokeball for his own safety and yet he won't do it because it's because it's because i always want to be with you pokey what how does Pikachu speak better English than my grandma? Has he been taking ESO night classes in the final cut that we haven't seen? Why was he acting like Hoarder when he can enunciate full out sentences? I have no idea where this movie was trying to go with this, but we end up having Ash die, leaving Pikachu to go full out ham and causing that mountain to look like Mount Sinai when Yahweh gave Moses the Ten Commandments, and Ash comes back because love and whatnot. Like I said. Everybody's happy, alive, and Ho-Ho appears to congratulate Ash, who demands a duel from him, but then they Rocky 3 us and we don't see who wins. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a sequel to this movie. I don't know if Pikachu's going to become an English teacher and educate his people, but what I do know for a darn tootin' fact is that y'all got to bring back Misty and Brock. 